Hello. Hello, everybody. I uh, just shut the door <laughs> to plug up sound. And I heard one of my dogs like move out of the way. Like, what is she doing? And now I know they're going to, not necessarily like putting their noses or their hands under the door, but like maybe laying against the door and sighing loudly. Because now they're locked out. So I did a little sketch today of this plant here. I have always tried to put not just my good work on Instagram. Instagram's where I started posting my work a long time ago. And so it was kind of my first opportunity for sharing and choosing what to share. And I know a lot of artists that I follow share their well, to me, it looks like their best work. I assume that they have bad work in a sketchbook somewhere, but I, I've i never seen it. And maybe they have perfect work all the time. I really don't know. But I made a decision to share mediocre ho-hum work as well as like my favorite pieces because um, I'm, I just wanted to be more real about it. And what I'm sharing today, I don't, oh, not that. What I'm sharing today is, um, three sketches I did, watercolor sketches of this plant. And I have these Lowish books. You can also see them. I have two of them that I already had of Lowish and her work. I first heard about her work through Mini Small. I'm gonna just close the window, the curtain, to see if I can improve the lighting. Um, my favorite thing about her work is that she's kind of unusual colors, but they really work. And then she also seemed to have a really good understanding of light. Those are the things I initially appreciated about her work. And then as I've read these two books here and I'm uh, almost done reading the third one, there, it's just a wealth of information. I love how she outlines her workflow, her thought process, how she thinks. And what I have learned from this third book is that we are actually pretty similar in how we kind of experience the world. I personally tend to remember or notice emotions more than any other thing. Some people notice, you know, what people are wearing or, you know, this or that. I, I tend to notice either nature, something, some natural element, or I'll notice um, a feeling. And so she mentioned that, and I was super happy to read that because I'd never heard an other artist talk about that. And so it gave me an idea of kind of how to approach my work. So I read three quarters of the book and then sat down and decided to paint this. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my thought process while I was, you know, painting. I, I filmed the process. I try to film anytime I paint, even if it's like something small, because even the small things, even the bad things, even the stuff that doesn't turn out good, which I'm pretty happy with how these turned out, but even if I didn't, it's still worth sharing because I'm gonna share with you my process and you'll, and you'll be able to see where where I stumble and where I'm struggling and where I make corrections and how I correct them. I think that that's super, that's super helpful to me when artists share that. It makes me so happy when artists share, when other artists share like, gosh, you know, the areas that they're, that they feel they're struggling or that I can see that they're struggling and then how they deal with that. Which is not so much a change in my body, but rather a diagnosis to explain something that I've been doing all along. Yeah. As soon as it does, in a small way, affect the way I... So I started off this painting as I normally would, like kind of that copy and paste behavior I talked about in my other video. And I just looked at the plant and tried to make it as realistic as possible. I mean, you know, saying that out loud, I'm like, it's not realistic at all. I didn't put the plant leaves in the order that they were actually in, and I minimized the texture on the outside of the plant. So as much as I think that I'm still doing, like, just copying things in my sketchbook, I'm not really doing that. I think that's more in, like, like my finished work if I'm working from a photograph. So irregardless, um, my second painting, I decided to push things a little bit further and apply the things that I had read in Loish's book. 
I was feeling quite inspired by all the things I've read and I wanted to implement them. And the thing that I wanted to implement most was composition because that's something that I feel like I don't pay enough attention to. Or, well, I do pay attention to it, but I just don't feel like my compositions are particularly creative. So I wanted to push that and I also wanted to push colors, like unusual colors. So in Lois's book, she has a great tutorial that explains step by step how she goes about thinking about um, adding unusual colors. She does it digitally and when you do things digitally, there's a lot more room for experimentation because you can make different choices in different layers. Here, I am working, you know, traditionally, so no layers, but I'm painting the same plant three times and then that gives me a little bit more of a chance to play around. So I decided to add in colors that I didn't see. I didn't see in reality. I don't have my favorite reds or oranges on this particular Daniel Smith palette that I'm using, but I do have alizarin crimson. And so I'm adding that not only to the pot, but also to the stripes of the snake plant. Then I'm adding yellow to the red areas and making, you know, a different kind of red. I could have mixed the paint on the palette, but I decided to do it on the paper instead, which is something I do in my sketchbook a lot. And I'm also adding yellow as a highlight, even though it is not there. I am pretending successfully. I think, I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm always conflicted on whether or not to add dirt to my plant paintings. I don't see it particularly detailed out in other people's paintings of plants. Now that my top painting is dry, I'm adding the shadow in and adding the shadow down below, even if it's not dry, because I'm happy to have the colors mix because I'm trying to be more imaginative in the colors that I'm using. One of the things that Loish talks about in her book is how to create volume through shape and I'm making sure to do this through carefully placed shadows. Though I started painting a background on the upper painting, I found it to be really, really boring. And Loish says she uses gradients for backgrounds that are a little flatter. So I was like, ah, here's a great opportunity for a gradient in a brighter color. And I can use a darker color at the bottom to cover up the fact that I made the plate too big. I'm adding some further shadows for definition. This is the painting that I have ended up liking the most, which is too bad because I didn't do a background on it. It's just plain white. On the last plant, I feel like I loosened up in some ways and tightened up in others, which you'd think by the third painting I'd be the, the most loose, but I've noticed a pattern that that's not always what happens. I don't know why, but I like the way that I did the leaves better, even though they are much less realistic. They are a lot more fun. One of my favorite things about watercolor is watching it flow all over the paper. So whenever I've got a lot of movement on the paper, I like to make sure that that part is um, not sped up so that you can enjoy um, watching it move all over the paper. So I'm adding yellow uh, for the lines on the snake leaves this time instead. And then I'm like, I can't even see it. It's definitely more accurate, but it doesn't really show up. And so wish I'd gone over it with red just to make it more interesting. I'm really pushing the shadows with this one, which is something that I used to do quite a bit is to create a tremendous amount of contrast in my paintings. And I guess I've kind of moved away from that the last year or so. As someone who primarily sketched a lot and didn't paint much, that was just kind of a default for me is making something high contrast and probably something that I relied too heavily on in my work to make it look decent. 
I've been branching out and experimenting more though. In the past, when I'm painting something like a pine cone or anything that has a lot of detail and has different things that are in front of each other, um, I'll often get, end up getting confused and not painting the dark parts and the light parts in the right place. So he here I was being really careful to put the shadows on the leaves in the right spots. And I kind of wish I'd gone a little further with it, uh, just because I feel like I was halfway there to making it high contrast and creating volume through shape. I've added the yellow here and I'm really happy with that decision. It's definitely feels like something that would have been in Loish's work. I liked it enough that I put it on the top painting as well. And I was afraid that my choice of background color for the base painting, I mean the bottom painting, was going to make it so you couldn't see the yellow, but it ended up being that the way I painted the background last instead of at first created a bit of a highlight around it. And I really love how that turned out as well. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me in my sketchbook painting this very beautiful, it has a name on it. I actually, I usually try to keep the tags because I never remember the names of things. It's Sanaversaria Samurai. I basically paint, I think it's a snake plant and it's just kind of like a more condensed form than the, than this one right here. And so anyway, it's a, one of my favorites and I just think it's really cute. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.